Hello everyone, Wolfie here. Last step before we face the betrayer himself. Illidary Council resembles a lot to King Molgar's fight in Girl's Lair. Characterized by difficult pull, AoE damage, many tanks including a mage tank and very dynamic and mobile fight. Quick interesting fact, lore-wise Illidan was not even interested as much in defending the Black Temple, but the council was tasked with organizing the defense as they were loyal to him even after the fall of their Prince Keltas. It is described beautifully in the Illidan's novel, so I'd recommend reading it. Enough for the intro, there's a council to fight, let's go. Since there are a total of 4 bosses, I'll go over them one by one and their abilities. Gatios the Shutterer is a paladin type of mob, hits for about 6 to 7 thousand on average with a melee, cannot crush though, does consecration on his AoE ability which takes for 2.2k holy damage every 3 seconds, so melee and tank gotta move out as soon as it drops on the ground and that way avoid any damage taken from it. Next ability is Hodge, regular dispellable stun. Blessing of Spell Wording and Blessing of Protection he can cast on other members of Council, but most likely it's on Malande and Veras and least likely at Zervor the Mage. As a regular Paladin he can have one or the other aura up, can be Devotion which gives him armor and reduce melee damage, or Chromatic Aura which increases spell resistance by a ton. Aura is affecting all four members at the same time. Lastly, his offensive abilities are Seals, Blood and Command along with the Judgment. Difference between the seals is not too big, but judgment is. Judging seal of blood leaves undispellable dot on the tank and cannot be reflected. Judging command deal a lot of damage at once, but it's reflectable, so it's quite important to do that. On top of that, reflecting the seal gives a tank a ton of threat. High Nethermans Reservoir is a mage type of mob. Casts dampen magic on himself, but way stronger than the regular mage buff. It is possible and needed to spell steal this buff every 2 minutes for the mage tank. Don't try to spell steal every dampened magic he does, just ignore it as long as you have one. On the other hand, the other mages in the raid can spell steal it too to boost their survivability from AoEs. Speaking of AoEs, Zervor casts both Flame Strike and Blizzard. While he is casting it, he is not doing damage on that mage tank. As for AoEs, their placement is random and just like Consecration, run out of it ASAP. Flame Strike will deal high initial damage and then tick for less damage. Blizzard will deal a set amount per every tick. Careful not to run from one into the another, and for crying out loud, use some kind of an add-on or regular stock floating tags to know if you're inside a blizzard or not. Lastly, melee range is a kill zone. Do not get close to Zervor ever. Position him outside of raid and tank him there since he will do an arcade explosion and deal a ton of damage in melee range. His main attack ability at mage tank is arcane bolt. With dampen magic it deals survivable damage. Lady Malanda, priest type of mob. Pretty much a healer of the party. She will start casting Circle of Healing and it's a priority to interrupt it. Either a rogue or a warrior for when she is affected by magic immunity and a shaman for when she is affected by physical immunity. Apart from casting COH, she is casting Empowered Smite at her tank and occasionally conjures a Divine Breath, which deals the same amount of damage as Smite but leaves a dot which ticks for 2.5 thousand every 2 seconds for 8 seconds. Every spell is interruptible, so interrupt as much as you can. It is quite useful to use Curse of Tongue on both Malande and Zervor, or just Mind Numbing Poison from Rogue Interrupter and Tongues on Zervor Mage. This way their damage is decreased and it's easier to interrupt the priest. Lastly, Malande can cast Reflective Shield on herself, which absorbs damage and reflects part of it back at the DPSer, so avoid DPSing her except for interrupt for those 20 seconds. Lastly, Varus, mob with the least amount of abilities. As a rogue type of mob, he vanishes for 30 seconds randomly and does poison ability on 5 targets during that time. Note that he can do poison on the same player twice in a row, if RNG says so. Poison deals 1000 damage every second for 4 seconds. From time to time, he will envenom the player affected by poison dealing instant 5 to 6000 damage. Best way to heal this is to have the priest shield the poison player and heal him or her with flash heal. On the side note, Bob might work for time being, if it isn't fixed already. Varus will ignore the threat table after reappearing from Vanish until he is damaged. Unlike other 3 bosses, he is actually stunnable so have a stun macro for him in case he starts running around after healers. Tanking the bosses, Gathios is tanked by the warrior main tank on the right side of the room, kiting boss between these 4 points. 
Every time there is an AoE under your feet or falling from above, move to the next point. Reflect judgment and be ready to pop some defensive ability or consumable like potion, nightmare seed or similar. While kiting, make sure to move far enough from AoE so melees and hunter's pets can survive. Off tank, Feral should tank Veras on the very left side of the room in non-cleave tactic. Otherwise, you can bring it next to the Getios and allow DPSers to hit both of them at the same time, but when he's affected by Bob, it's useless. Malanda should be tanked where she stands, either by Paladin tank or Mage tank if your Mage is Sigma. Next to Malanda should be ideally 4 Interrupters, 2 melee and 2 spell interrupters, but 2 overall is enough if your Rogue has PvP gloves and mind numbing poison, otherwise a Warrior and Curse of Tongues. Shaman hit capped elemental preferably or Resto Shaman would work as well. Enhancement only if previous Interrupters died to AoE or DC or similar. Mage tank should tank mage on the very left side or deep on top of the stairs. Just stand still and walk only when evading AoE. Even then you can just blink, but don't blink into the boss. Healing on this fight will be intensive, so make sure you use potion early into the fight. Rotate mana tides for healers, innervate called out players and etc, since the fight is quite long. COH for raid healing and poison healing, Resto Druid for hotting all 4 tanks or 3 if mage is tanking both mage and priest. Resto Shaman seal main tank, druid off tank and melees. Lastly Holy Paladin full time only on mage. Priority for this fight is avoiding AoE and surviving, interrupting heals, avoiding AoE and surviving, dealing damage and killing boss before 15 minutes berserk and lastly once again avoiding AoE and surviving. The tricky part of this fight is pull. Let mage pull first and spell steal instantly and then half a second after that misdirect paladin to main tank and priest to either protodin or mage. If there is another MD available do it for feral, but I remember always managing to just fairy fire the rogue or feral charge. Then stabilize and spread. Tanking rogue after vanishing can be tricky if he gets bop right after showing up. Be ready to spam moonfire at him if he gets bopped or just charge him instantly if he's not bopped. 2 seconds after showing up he will stand still being half stealthed in about 30 yards away from where he is vanished. So take him all the way to the wall before vanishing and then just wait for him between that point and raid healers. That's GG. In case you have issues while pulling you can send in a pet to die or a warlock minion then taunt or aggro bosses from there. Every one of the bosses have about 1.75 million HP, but they share the same health pool, so damage to one of them will spread 4 ways on all of them. Bloodlusting is best to be done as early as possible while everyone is alive, but keep an eye on Paladin's aura, bloodlust for melees and hunters when the boss has spell resistance and for casters when he has devotion aura. Don't tunnel vision and do your job, it's equation for success. I'd give this boss encounter 4.5 out of 5. Everything is tricky and RNG dependent. From pull to AoE, damage resist, immunity and high damage to possible 6 to 7% healing on failed interrupt. Fight is healing and mana intensive as well. Longer it goes, harder it gets. There is not that much trash to go through, but they are quite hard to kill. Promenade Sentinel is casting arcane charges, but only L5 is important. It has longer cast time and deals 100% of target's HP as damage, so it's definitely a kill unless a target is shielded by a priest or uses some item like Nightmare Seed. Also avoid Pillars of Light. Most of these are avoidable. Healing will be intensive, so if you're pulling these, don't pull more than one. Illidari Bloodlord is one of the pack's mob that has to be tanked by the main tank. Does judgment and stun, that has to be dispelled right away. Apart from that, Bloodlord will pop a divine shield. It is up to priests to mass dispel as soon as possible. Illidari Battle Mage is a mini boss. Look at it as a training before the council. Battle Mage will do flame strikes and blizzard randomly, so avoid it. Beside that, it has a regular fireball and frostbolt. Illidari Archon is priest type of mob and swaps between shadow form and normal holy form, casting just regular priest spells. Twist is that he heals and casts without moving. You can either interrupt it or sheep it and kill it at the end. Illidari Assassin is a rogue mob of course, which means he's annoying. Vanishes and uses paralyzing poison. It has to be dispelled by shamans or druids ASAP, especially if it's on one of the tanks. Illidari Council is just as big of a roadblock to Illidan as mother. During progression, running back will take a lot of time and will be annoying, so rather use soul stones and or flasks of petrification to resurrect raids afterwards. 
That's it for the council. Stay calm, survive, follow calls, and they will die sooner than later. You don't need 25 players to kill it, but this surely makes it way easier. Next time we will deal with Illidan. In the meantime, stay safe and have fun playing the game. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.